Act two, scene four. Enter Ross and an old man. Three score and ten I can remember well, within the volume of which time I have seen. Hours dreadful and things strange, but this sore night hath trifled formal knowings. Ah, good father, thou seest the heavens as troubled with man's act, threaten his bloody stage by the clock. Tis day, and yet dark night strangles the travelling lamp. Tis night's predominance, or the day's shame, that darkness does face of earth in tomb. When living light should kiss it, tis unnatural. Even like the deed that's done on Tuesday last, a falcon, towering her pride of place, was by a mousing hound hawked at and killed. And Duncan's horses, a thing most strange and certain, beauteous and swift, the minions of their race turned wild in nature, broke their stalls, flung out, contending against obedience, as they would make war with mankind. Tis said they eat each other. They did so to the amazement of mine eyes that looked upon it. Here comes the good Macduff. Enter Macduff. How goes the world, sir, now? Why, see you not? Tis it known who did this more than bloody deed? Those that Macbeth hath slain. Alas the day, what good could they pretend? They were suborned, Malcolm and Donald Bain, the king's two sons, are stolen away and fled, which puts upon them suspicion of the deed. Against nature still, thriftless ambition, that wilt raving up thine own life's means. Then tis most like the sovereignty will fall upon Macbeth. He is already named and gone to Scon to be invested. Where is Duncan's body? Carried to Colmkill, the sacred storehouse of his predecessors and guardian of their bones. Will you to Scone? No, cousin, I'll to Fife. Well, I will hither. Well, may you see things well done there. Adieu, lest our old robes sit easier than our new. Farewell, father. God's benison go with you and with those that would make good of bad and friend of foes. Exeunt.